Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to talk about the differences between an electric fuel pump and a mechanical fuel pump and when it's the right time to move to a mechanical fuel pump. Now mechanical fuel pumps are nothing new. For the majority of the decades that we've enjoyed the automobile, engines had small, low pressure, low volume mechanical fuel pumps mounted to the engines. Through the 80s and 90s when fuel injection became the norm, the mechanical fuel pumps were phased out and we went to a small electric high pressure in tank fuel pump. Between the aftermarket producing more and more powerful engines and the popularity increasing of alcohol-based fuels like methanol and ethanol, we get to the point that even multiple in-tank fuel pumps can't keep up with fuel demand and we need to move to a larger external fuel pump. For years, my go-to fuel system for a high-powered car was used a factory fuel tank with a higher volume in-tank pump feeding a surge tank that I then mounted my high volume external electric fuel pump to. Now, using the factory fuel tank gave me a few advantages. I had a factory filling system, a factory gas gauge, and OEM level crash security as that tank was designed to be in that car. And this system worked well, and I was able to go sixes in the quarter mile with a single external electric fuel pump. As we increased boost pressure and went to methanol fuel, we needed more fuel than the electric fuel pump could supply, so we switched to a large external mechanical fuel pump. Now there are some brushless fuel pumps coming onto the market that show promise, but currently there's nothing that will outperform a mechanical fuel pump, especially at the fuel pressures needed for boosted engines. So the first advantage of a mechanical fuel pump would be the flow. This Waterman pump flows over double this large Weldon pump, and this large Weldon pump is a very, very powerful electrical fuel pump, one of the highest flowing on the market. The second advantage of a mechanical fuel pump is it doesn't require any electricity to run. So when you map out all the things that require amperage on your vehicle, the fuel system is often one of the largest consumers of power. So that 40 or 50 amps that you are using to power the fuel system, that energy can stay in the vehicle and be used for other things like the ignition system. It also rules out any problems with fuel system related wiring. So if you've ever been at an event and had an issue with something as simple as a relay, it could be a headache. So the, the robust design of a mechanical fuel pump, I would argue is more reliable in a race environment. Another couple of advantages are because it doesn't have an electrical motor on it, it's quiet in its operation. So if you're using a belt drive, mechanical fuel pump, it's just silent. If you're using a cable, you'll hear some noise out of the cable, but far less noise that you'd hear from a large external electric fuel pump. Last but not least is due to its robust design, it's really an all fuel compatible part. So if you're dealing with ethanol, methanol, or nitromethane, these pumps are very, very tough and can deal with any type of fuel without tearing themselves up. Now let's get into the downsides of the mechanical fuel pump. The first one's pretty small. It's a mechanical fuel pump. If the engine's not turning it, it does not move fuel. So when you get into crank to run, where your electric fuel pump, you turn the key on, it primes the fuel system, you start the car, it fires right off. Mechanical fuel pumps often have a long crank to run time. Now you can work around this with an electric fuel pump in the tank if you want, but if you're just running a straight mechanical fuel pump, expect to take longer than normal to get the car fired up. A lot of guys that have race cars, they don't really mind this because it gives the oil pump some opportunity to start moving some oil at the same time. The next disadvantage of a mechanical fuel pump is the mounting solution. With the electric fuel pump, you have a lot of flexibility of where you can put that pump in the vehicle. You just have to get fuel to it, power it, and you're up and running. Mechanical fuel pumps are a bit more complicated because you have to turn that pump with the engine. So if you're gonna mount it on the engine, you can run it off the camshaft, the crankshaft, or on the back of your dry sump pump, or you can mount it remotely and drive it with a cable. Each mounting solution offers its own advantages and disadvantages. So for example, if you're gonna drive the fuel pump off the camshaft, that's normally a pretty easy place to put it because there's space available to mount the pump. However, if you're drag racing that vehicle and it's 60 foot well, having that pump up high and the fuel down low or the fuel far away from the pump can offer some cavitation problems once that car is 60 footing well. So if you're drag racing the car, the camshaft is not often the best place to put it. The next option is to mount the fuel pump lower and drive it off the crankshaft of the engine or bolt it to the back of the dry sump pump. This is the favorite amongst most drag racers because they pair it with a small front mounted fuel cell, keeping the weight of the fuel in the front of the vehicle while allowing the fuel pump access to a good gravity fed source of fuel to meet the supply demands of the engine. The downside to this is you've now got a fuel cell or fuel tank out there potentially outside of the frame rails, so crash liability in terms of fire does go up a bit. 
The next option is to mount the pump remotely and drive it with a cable. Now this is a favorite amongst guys that use their cars a lot because you can still have a high amount of fuel capacity with the factory tank and avoid the cavitation issues associated with having the pump mounted high on the engine. Keep in mind that with a cable, you're gonna have to take the cable off the car every thousand miles or so, take it apart, clean it, grease it, and put it back together so there is additional maintenance when using the cable drive. A few more things to consider is just like electric fuel pumps, mechanical fuel pumps come in different sizes and flow ratings and you'll wanna pick a pump that's sized correctly for your needs. Along with that additional flow that mechanical pump offers, you'll need a larger regulator to be able to bypass enough fuel that the fuel pressure doesn't run away. Last but not least is whatever size line you have feeding your mechanical fuel pump, you want at least as much of that vent on the tank so the fuel cell or fuel tank is not operating under a negative pressure ratio, causing the pump to suck air. Thanks for watching and I can tell you from experience, mechanical fuel pumps were a pretty eye-opening addition for me. A lot of times you think that the engine uses a certain amount of fuel and you're looking at the fuel map and the shape of the fuel map and how it illustrates how the engine uses air and then you put a mechanical fuel pump on it and because you've got so much fuel available, you get a really humbling experience of how that engine actually uses air because you never had more fuel than you needed. If you have any questions, comment below or feel free to reach out. Thanks.